Burgau is one of my favorite little villages to visit in the Algarve. It's real, authentic and genuine and hasn't changed that much from when it was a, a real fishing village a few years ago. But don't be swayed by some tourist guides and bloggers who announce Burgau as the Santorini of the Algarve. Sure, you can grab a beautiful photo which looks perfect on Instagram, suggesting that Burgau is super similar to a Greek island. What it really is though, is a small, old, sometimes tatty fishing village with some great restaurants, a handful of hotels and little apartments and right on the beach, right on the water. In this video, I'm going to show you around Burgau and we'll get to know a few of the restaurants and places to stay. Burgau is sandwiched between Prad Luz and Salema down on the south Algarve coast, just 20 minutes drive west of Lagos. It is definitely more remote than some of the other coastal communities we have in the Algarve, but this has kept it small, quiet and peaceful, although in summer the beach can naturally get full. As you can see, the 822 highway only reaches Lagos, as does the railway, so you'll have to bus it or take an Uber or taxi from Lagos down to Burgau if you don't own your own car. Or rent one, obviously. Burgau is a solid 1 hour and 10 minutes from Faro Airport, and that can add up if you're getting a taxi from Faro, it can get quite expensive, um, and 2 hours 50 from Lisbon Airport. You know, many people have actually expressed surprise at the fact that they didn't know about our services that we've built up over the years. So here's the deal. We're now a fully fledged relocation support team. We've built our own real estate agency focusing on you, the buyer, but that's not all. We offer daily scouting tours where we drive you around and show you the area with a view to living there. We can find you long-term rentals and we can sell your house, as I just mentioned. And we've brought all these services together into, and I'm really excited about this stuff, is the ultimate scouting trip. We're calling it our relocation retreat. Now, our biggest strength though, is sewing all these services together um, with our team of professional lawyers, accountants, financial advisors, and our helpful support crew, we've helped hundreds, hundreds of expats relocating to Portugal. So get in touch through algarvedics.com and we'll be able to help you. And now you know what we've built over the last couple of years. And it's been a fun story setting that up, but let's move on to the history of Burgau, which follows a similar path to the rest of the Algarve, starting off with early history in the prehistoric era. Evidence of prehistoric populations have been found dating back to the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. The Romans had an important presence in what they called Lusitania, and Burgau was nearby to the Roman road which connected Lagos and Sagres, with the ruins of a villa being excavated near Boca do Rio, just west of Burgau. During the wane of the Roman Empire, St. Vincent's remains were brought to what was then named Cape St. Vincent after him in the 4th century AD, and eventually the Moorish occupation began and lasted for hundreds of years, from the 8th to the 13th centuries. Naturally, many parts of the Algarve benefited from advanced agricultural techniques, architecture and a rich cultural heritage. In the mid-13th century, the Moors were driven out and Burgau was integrated into the Kingdom of Portugal, which flourished. The town has long been a fishing village and the Almadna fort, constructed in the 16th century, helped protect the fishermen and their townsfolk from marauding pirates. In the mid-20th century, fishing was surpassed by tourism, however Burgau has made an effort to preserve its traditional character through local festivals, food, events and tradition. When you go to Burgau, it's important to be able to stay there. So let's go and check out some of the hotels and the logement local, which is Portuguese for bed and breakfast. All right. Right. Hotels. Okay. Let's start here. Hotel Praia do Burgau. Now, back when I used to do our tours personally, one of our clients stayed at this hotel and it was okay. It was nothing special, but the view was spectacular. Rumor has it that it's been sold and there are definitely some reparations underway as we walk past. So who knows what it may become? Exciting times. If you do know, please drop it in the comments. I'm really curious to hear. A little further away from the coast lies the famous Casa Grande, run by Sally Vincent for the last 40 years. She and her husband rejuvenated this from the 1912 manor house that it was and it's become a bed and breakfast um, for them. So she's got wonderful stories, which I'd love to hear sometime. Uh, but in the interim, you can book a stay with her through casagrandeportugal.com. 
carrying on, and I need to mention Lucy and Sean's beautiful hilltop lodge, which you can book through OceanBluePortugal.com. It's a modern, lovely home with six separate suites overlooking the stunning pool and the view, obviously. She put us up for the night, and we were super grateful. It's the perfect place to stay, just outside Bagar. Now, rewinding back to the clifftops, there is a collection of apartments called Apartamentos Os Descobrimentos, complete with pool, restaurant, bar, and parking areas. So there's another for you. But um, I was actually looking, looking online to try and see if we could find a price for those. And it's really difficult. They seem to be full up for the whole summer, so you might have to plan ahead a bit. For the rest, you'll need to scurry around on Airbnb having a look for what you can, because there's a lot available. So um, it's more of an Airbnb town than a proper sort of hotel strip like Lagos or Villamora. We're just walking down one of Bagar's only streets, but it's a beautiful little, it's a nice windy little uh, Friday afternoon. No, it feels like Friday. What is it? Monday night. Monday, yeah. God, been working too hard. Getting a little peckish. <laughs> Pizzeria, good spot. We've got lots of restaurants to, to look at. It looks nice. That looks very nice. Yeah. Those bananas, not as good as Madeira ones. I love your <laughs> to the walk tomorrow. Like Cheers, Nick. You know? Looking forward to it. Cheers, Dwight. Cheers. Cheers. Um, Cheers, Lizzie. Cheers. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, pleasure to have you guys again. Super. We were actually heading out to finish the Algarve Crosswalk, a series of walks I did with different guests all along the Algarve coast. So if you haven't seen that series, go check out the playlist. So we enjoyed a drink with Lucy before heading down to gorge ourselves on pizzas, but let me recap all the restaurants we found in Burgau first. So down on the main street, also known as Rua Principal, and as I mentioned, this is a quick recap. So there is the Red Fort Indian restaurant on the left. Across the road is Café du Burgal, also known as Beach Break. A little further on and around the corner to the north is a fairly new place called Repolio Gastrobar, which we walked through earlier. Back down the direction of the beach, we pass Casa Padaria, whose pizzas we are most likely going to consume in a little bit, because Dwight's looking very keen for one of those. Heading down the Rue of Vincing de Bril, we pass U Club, restaurant and bar on the left hand side. We have had lunch before actually. Um, Love Bagar on the right, which is absolutely delightful with restaurant and bar eyes just behind them. 
Amazing dinners there. I've had amazing dinners there. With, and they're wonderful people as well. So, hi, Stino. How's it going? A little further down, we pass number nine, Tashkabar, which is a good fun spot for a drink. And then Bridzi. I don't know how you, how do you, exp how do you pronounce this? Brizzy or Briz? I don't know. Brizzy Bar. And Miam Burgao, which both have great views of the beach. The beach bar Burgao, just around the corner, actually on the sand. Sadly, I've never seen it open. I'm sure it is, but I'm never when I'm there. So we sunk a quick pint at Baraka, which is on the square around the corner with restaurant Encora, and the two restaurants that we walked past earlier, restaurant Matias and Pinga's Bar. There are a few places a little further out from the center, and if you love them, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear your opinions. And that's it, we're heading off for a pizza. We're so hungry. We, but we actually found this pizza which had steak on it, which had been cooked for six hours and then it was just really like the, the sauce was drizzled on it as well. It was quite unique, really, really tasty. So thank you, Casa Padre. Yours is pretty stunning as well. I'm just curious about there's a Portuguese steak pizza. Cheers. Cheers. Forgot wow, the video. Look at that pizza, man. How's your pizza, Nick? It's phenomenal. This, um, what was it, six day old, six day old? Six day dried meat, or what was it? So, no, six, six hour cooked pizza. Oh, there we go. <laughs> no, this meat has been matured for like six days and it's been drizzled. The pizza's been drizzled in its own sauce. Fantastic. Tomorrow morning, we're actually going on another mission you see in another video. We're going to walk all the way to Sagres, and that's our final section of this cross. It's, we're calling it the Algarve Crosswalk. But it's such a stunning evening. I hope you enjoyed this video all about Bogau, and we'll see you next week. AlgarveAddicts.com